When it comes to teaching, there's always a lot going on, and so anything that I can use to help me make my class run a little bit smoother is something that I want to be working on. So we're going to be talking in this video about different classroom management tools that you can use to help you get your classroom under control, make your life run a little more smoothly, and most of these you probably already have, so the added bonus is you don't have to spend a bunch of money. So without further ado, let's get started okay number one is gonna be the card system the card system is how i do my classroom management and the actual cards are the tools that i am going to be using so i'll link a whole video talking about the card system down below but basically i just have like construction paper that i cut and laminated into yellow cards orange cards and red cards you can also do green cards but Basically, the kids go down the row of if they're not following directions, they get a yellow card. If they fix it, it goes away. If they don't fix it, they go to orange and then they go to red and each one has a consequence. So yellow is like a small timeout. Orange is a longer timeout further away from the group. And then red is you're in timeout the whole rest of class and I'm going to call your mom and you're going to have silent lunch. So you know all of that um, and then you can also do green cards, which I do not do because that's a reward and we use dojo at our school so just instead of having green cards i use dojo and i just give out the points throughout the class on my phone instead of doing that so if i didn't have dojo i would do the green cards and then those kids with green cards at the end of class would get some kind of reward but that's kind of the gist of it and it is really handy and again i'll link that post down below to learn a little bit more number two is probably my favorite and that is my chimes so i have a set of like desktop chimes um you might not have that you can also use like a bell you can use a resonator bell like whatever you want to use but something that makes noise for a while the reason is because how we use our chimes is if i ring the chimes then you raise your hand until the sound stops that means they have to be quiet enough long enough to hear when the sound stops also, if they don't hear it, they see other people raising their hands and then they realize what's happening and then they raise their hands and they get quiet and it really helps to like calm it down. And since it rings for so long, you have to wait until it's all the way quiet until you can continue. And I also continue like I don't talk until the chimes stop so that I am doing that as well. So the chimes are one of my absolute favorite ways to get the students quiet in class. It's very easy. It's very simple. I also have a little like one resonator bar that I ding and I like to take that if I go to the students' classrooms. Um, and you can also grab those as well. I'll link some down below on Amazon if you don't have any. Number three is our point board. This is like a total like do it yourself situation. Um, but I have a binder that has sheet protectors in it. And in the sheet protectors, there are little pieces of paper that say like first grade students, teacher, and it's just a tally board. It is not fancy but it is what it is the reason i do it on the binder is because if you fold the binder out it makes kind of like a little a shape which means that it can hold its shape and you can move it what i really started that with is because when i was traveling to the students classrooms during the um pandemic and we had like hybrid teaching i was going to their class and there was like some in class and some online um that way i could put it on my cart and i could move it around and it was really easy that way and then i just kept it afterwards so that's why it's on a binder because it's portable but what we use with this one for is we do teacher versus student points so if the students are doing a good job then they get a point if i'm working harder than they are then i get a point my goal is for the students to earn about two to three points every day and we earn points for game time on friday since i see my kids for a week at a time so we do a week at a time and on friday i take their points so if they have five and i have two then we do two wait sorry we do five minus two is three they get three minutes of a game to play with the little kids i usually pick their game with the older kids i let them pick their game which gives it an added bonus of like it's whatever you want to play um so i shoot for about 10 a week which comes out to about two ish a day um and then if they make three then that gives you you know a little bit of leverage over them and also if there's a day you don't see them for whatever reason that works so two to three a day is what i shoot for and then about 10 ish on friday is what i like to get 
if for whatever reason I have more points than they do, which I think it's only ever happened one time, um, then we have however many points I have more than they do. We sit in silence and stare at them. Again, that's only happened once. It was kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie. They were very disappointed and it never happened again. So I would call that an effective classroom management strategy. The third is my mute unmute board. So this is again something that came out of distance learning and it's just a felt board that I wrote mute on one side and unmute on the other side. Now, full disclosure, I actually did this kind of as a joke when I started and then I I ended up using it a lot. So I used it online to show them like if we were learning a new song, I would teach them the words and I would say them and they would echo. And so having the mute or unmute was an easy way to show them like, okay, unmute, tell me the words, mute, I tell you the next line and we could keep going that way. And that way they're not unmuting, muting, and it was just like super complicated. I just flipped the board upside down to do that. I still use that sometimes when we're learning new songs and we're repeating after me and I'll put the mute when I'm talking and then I do unmute when it's their turn. It's a little bit silly since they're now in front of me, but it's, you know, for those who were online, it's like, oh, haha, look, we're unmuting and unmuting. But it also gives a visual signal of when it's time for them to echo, which is really helpful because sometimes they have a hard time knowing like when to echo and when to not. If I'm not using that, I also use like a little wand where I'll point to myself and I'll point to them or I'll just, you know, straight up point to myself and point to them. And all of those things work. I know some people use like a microphone, but we're not quite that fancy. So we have a mute slash unmute felt board. There we are. And if you're wondering like, Becca, why aren't you showing many of these things in real life? Because I'm filming this over the summer and I did not think to bring all of these things home over the summer. So I do apologize, but hopefully the pictures give you a good enough explanation of what they are. Um, number five is the turn it in box. This is a little less classroom management and more like organization, but we're going to go with it. So I have a little box that is my turn it in box. I got this from like TJ Maxx, but they sell them everywhere. So I'll see if I can link some down below and I have a big one and then a smaller one and they like sit in each other. Okay. The reason this is helpful is because when students turn things in, they turn everything into the blue basket every single time. That way I don't have random papers on my desk on my table, in my hand, cause I'ma lose them. And I tell them, I'm like, do not hand it to me. I will lose it, put it in the blue basket. If I find it anywhere else, it's going to the trash can. When students come up to me with their papers, I just go and point to the blue basket. I'm like, do not give it to me. I will lose it, put it in the blue basket. Um, and it just helps with like coordination. Why I do the two next to each other is that then you have a stash underneath. So this helps if you have lots of classes back to back, you can just like paper clip the ones on the top and then stick them on the bottom so you can keep the classes separate. Or if you're working on a project, you can stick it in the bottom and then pull it back out the next day. Or you can put the extra copies in the bottom so that you just don't have like papers everywhere. And those are all handy ways to make that nice and simple. Oh, and apparently that was the last one I had. I thought I had another one. Oh. Okay. Well, I hope that was good enough for you because that's all I have here on my list. So I would love to know any classroom management tools you have. I know some people love like the Amazon doorbell or like different things like that. So let me know your little tricks and hacks down below in the comments because I'm super curious or you can send me a message over on Instagram. It's at Becca's Music Room. If you have a question, by the way, that's the best way to get the fastest response to me is to send me a message over on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to hear what you have to say in the comments and in over on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye.